Once a cathedral, then a mosque, now a museum. Hagia Sophia is at the heart of a legal battle to convert Istanbul's emblematic monument back into a mosque. But why now? What purpose would it serve? And how political is the decision? This is Inside Story. there and welcome to the program. I'm Laura Kyle. It's an ancient monument revered by different ideologies for centuries. Hagia Sophia in Turkey, one of the world's most contested buildings, is creating controversy once again. It was the largest Christian cathedral in the Eastern Roman Empire for a thousand years. Now one of the busiest tourist attractions in Istanbul is a museum. But not for much longer if Turkey's government gets the go-ahead to convert it back into the mosque it was during the Ottoman Empire. The proposals opposed by some secular groups as well as the head of the Eastern Orthodox Church, the Greek government and the US. Turkey's highest consultative body met on Thursday and says it'll announce its ruling within 15 days. Sam Kozioglu has more. Once a church, later a mosque and now a museum, Hagia Sophia has always been precious and sacred for both Christians and Muslims. Built as a church in the 6th century, the Hagia Sophia was converted into a mosque after the conquering of what was Constantinople in 1453, then turned into a museum by Mustafa Kemal Atatürk following the foundation of the Turkish Republic in 1923. Now the Turkish government wants to alter its status from museum to mosque. Reopening of Hagia Sophia for worship means an obligatory demonstration of respect on our side for the will which established these endowments. At the same time, it's a token of our gratitude and loyalty to the spiritual personage of Sultan Fatih, the conqueror. Hagia Sophia is part of the UNESCO World Heritage, which forms Istanbul's famous skyline. It's been a museum since 1935. The Armenian Church in Turkey says Hagia Sophia should be open to worship for both Christians and Muslims, and the Orthodox Christian Church is concerned at the transformation. The conversion of Hagia Sophia into a mosque will disappoint millions of Christians around the world. And Hagia Sophia, which, due to its sacredness, is a vital center where East is embraced with the West will fracture these two worlds. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan says Hagia Sophia can function like the nearby Blue Mosque, open to daily prayers and tourists at the same time. In Turkey, a Muslim country, we are free to worship anywhere we want. No one has any say on it. Petitions were signed by Turks to support the conversion, but there are opponents. This is sad, a blow to our tourism. I believe it is not good for Turkey. The conversion of Hagia Sophia to a mosque is a popular discussion in Turkey and has support from the public along with the nationalist and conservative parties. Until last year, President Erdogan stayed out of the debate. However, he is very vocal about it now. Many believe it's a political move, especially given the rising tension between Turkey and Greece in the eastern Mediterranean. After part of the Quran about conquest was recited in Hagia Sophia last month, the Greek foreign ministry said it insulted the religious feelings of Christians. The Turkish government says Hagia Sophia is a domestic issue not to be interfered with. Sinam Kosolo, Al Jazeera, Istanbul. Well, let's bring in our guests now and with us today from Turkey, Turkey's capital, Ankara, we have Yusuf al Baradai, political writer and professor at the University of Halic in Istanbul. From the Greek capital, Athens, Yanis Kotsubitis, managing editor at Kappa News and expert on European affairs. And from Istanbul, Cengiz Tomar, president of Ahmet Yasawi University in Kazakhstan and professor of history. A very warm welcome to all of you. Now, just before we open up our discussion today, we can actually speak to 
Jaldet Yalmaz. He's the deputy chairman of the AK Party in charge of foreign affairs. And he joins us now from Ankara. Very good uh, to have you joining us here on Inside Story. Uh, let's get an idea from you why President Erdogan wants to reconvert the Hagia Sophia now. This is not a personal issue of President Erdogan. It is, of course, Turkey's uh, issue. Right now, there is a court decision about this uh, whole uh, issue. Uh, this uh, Council of State in Turkey has uh, made a decision, but they have not yet announced this decision. They are preparing the uh, writings of their decision. And based on this decision, it will be clarified whether the 1935 uh, government decision is valid or not legally. This is a legal part. Mm. But of course, there is also a political part and assessment. And that is not re related to President Erdogan or AK Party. That is about Turkish nation as a whole, actually. To, uh, when you uh, look at surveys, when you look at the public opinion, there is a general expectation that uh, Hagia Sophia should be open to prayers. That is the uh, I mean, social expectation about that. And that does not uh, exclude the, uh, of course, use of uh, Hagia Sophia as a uh, heritage of humanity. Mm. We believe that right, right, just like any other mosque in Turkey, like Blue Mosque, uh, you can, uh, of course, benefit from uh, such uh, buildings for prayers as well as uh, for touristic attractions or okay. for other... I mean, you purposes. say that it's a national yeah, issue and Erdogan says it's an internal issue, but let's look at the Hagia Sophia. It's got huge historical and cultural significance for billions of people around the world, not least 300 million Orthodox Christians. The Greeks are getting very upset about this. The US is getting upset about this. The Greek Orthodox Church is getting upset about this. Why risk all that upset? But, but but let me let me emphasize that this is not an issue concerning uh, this is an issue concerning internal affairs of Turkey and it is sovereign rights. But of course, uh, in converting same, it is an issue that then affects the same, all these other the same, people the same, as well. Yeah, yeah, I understand, and naturally, everyone is free to express their opinions. I respect all of the opinions, but nobody has the right to impose uh, such, uh, I mean, preferences upon Turkey. It is the decision of, of Turkish people and Turkish society. But why, right, after uh, 90 years of it being a museum and satisfying that, that both that sides as a place that, that, that all people that, that can me. go to, is it being uh, discussed now? Many people would say that it's for political gain, that Erdogan has only brought up this issue twice no, in no, his no, leadership. The last time was a year ago, just before municipal elections, when he was worried about losing the Istanbul that's, seat, that's, and indeed did, correct. and don't, now when the economy is on its knees. No, we don't have any elections right now. There is no need for popular discussions in Turkey. We have made a very successful fight against But Erdogan is certainly facing in, some political region, rivalries region, with members of his party are, forming their own parties. Of, no, no, no. We don't have any internal, uh, I mean, election time or any anything like populist moment in Turkey. That is not correct assessment. The situation is the legal basis of this uh, issue and also social expectations across, across I mean, it, it is not related to one party. It is a cross-party uh, issue. And uh, there are many people from opposition parties and other parties that share the same expectations. So this is not a party issue. It is uh, uh, beyond party issues. And we have been very much respectful for all religions in Turkey. When you look, look at our 18 years of uh, performance as government, President Erdogan himself, he joined, uh, I mean, uh, construction of churches in Turkey. We have taken many legal de decisions to give back assets of Christian uh, communities okay. back, and they were very revolutionary steps. Let, let, me, let me just put one more question respect, to you, uh, Jaldak if I may, because um, this has we, we just... to do with the, the, the other uh, religions or uh, okay. ways of life. Okay, we're just uh, getting reports that Erdogan has uh, instructed his advisory council to hold first prayers at Hagia Sophia on the 15th of July. That, of course, is the fourth anniversary of the failed coup attempt. Is this true? No, there is no such announcements. Uh, I mean, th there are lots of things discussed on this issue. Some people may have uh, raised their expectations on these issues, but uh, uh, so far there is no official announcements, no direct uh, 
uh, interpretation on these issues from President Erdogan. On the contrary, he just uh, underlined that we have to wait for the court decision and then we will make our assessment. That is what okay. President Erdogan has announced. Jodat Yalmaz, we appreciate you taking the time to join us here on Inside Story. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK, well, let's bring in the, our other guests now. And, Yanis, if I can turn to you first. We heard there from the uh, deputy chairman of the AK Party that this is a national issue, it's a Turkish issue, that most of Turkey wants this. What's your response to that? Well, first of all, uh, Hagia Sophia is a universal monument. It's been protected by UNESCO. It's been uh, for more than 90 years a museum and a symbol of coexistence and a symbol of secular Turkey. And what we see now is another step, another attack by Mr. Erdogan on the secular heritage of Turkey. He's been attacking the Lausanne Treaty since three or four years now. He's been attacking every major heritage that uh, Mustafa Kemal has uh, given to his country as, as a founding father of the Turkish Republic. And now another symbol of uh, Mustafa Kemal's heritage, Hagia Sophia, is about to be turned, converted into a mosque. This is all in line with an ad ideological struggle by Mr. Erdogan and Aka Party to turn Turkey into a Muslim Islamist country. That's clear. Cengiz, this is such a controversial issue. I mean, what's your view? Is it a secular attack or is it simply answering the call of the Turkish people? This actually the same uh, legal issue if you look at the history because this is uh, Istanbul conquered by uh, sword in uh, 1453 and it became a uh, uh, mosque, some other uh, churches as well. And 567 years it was a church. Now in Ataturk time uh, they have changed into a museum because of the zeitgeist of the uh, time and also a uh, revolutionary movement uh, through the westernization and and you think uh, is, I will give you some example like a recitation of azan in Turkish in uh, Ataturk's time then they change into uh, Arabic in uh, Democratic pa Democrat Party in Adnan Menders time you think that like that this is that guys is now uh, totally different from that time and according to law endowment law, Wakaf law, uh, it uh, by the uh, Fatih Sultan Mehmet, the conqueror, it, uh, church uh, changed or uh, converted to mosque. And I think it's Turkey now returned back its legacy. And also it is, according to Islamic law, also uh, civic law, it is okay for that. Why? Because it was a decision by the uh, cabinet now we have another cabinet and can uh, change this one. I think uh, most of Turkish people uh, want uh, to see this uh, mosque as, as more, uh, Hagia Sophia as mosque. And you can uh, find a lot of uh, examples in the world, such as a cathedral in uh, Granada in Spain, and such as uh, mosques now uh, they can use in, uh, in uh, Greece as some uh, exhibition halls and other mm. things, and most of them, uh, you know, without uh, minarets. The, we have uh, same a lot of examples okay. in the world. I, I, I'm I interested think this is in, a um, legal this issue. Of, and we, okay, I, I'm just interested in this figure, this, this poll that said that 73% of Turks are happy to see it turning into a mosque, as you're sort of alluding to in your answer there. What I'm wondering is, you're in Istanbul. If that poll was taken there in that city, what would be the result? I think it's, it is related to sociology of Turkey. Uh, in you look at the position of government, look at the position of parliament, and you can see that 70, 75 percent of, uh, we can say, religious or, uh, uh, you know, t Turkish people in general, and nationalist and religious people. And I think 70, 75 percent uh, says that yes for uh, conversion, maybe 20% uh, says no. I think this is this is uh, in related to general sociology of Turkey okay. right now okay. and the zeitgeist of the uh, time. Interesting. So, Yusuf, what purpose do you think Hagia Sophia would serve now as a mosque? 
Okay, without knowing the background of Ayasofya and the political history of Turkey, it will be impossible to explain what is the situation. Mr. Cengiz very well underlined that in Turkey between 1930s and between 1950s, there happened that Azan has been transformed from original Arabic to Turkish. And the Ottoman palaces has been turned to the casinos for playing gamble inside. And reciting Quran, teaching Quran uh, has been also strictly forbidden in those years. So Turkey is again changing all those issues to the original. Uh, I mean, Atan uh, started to be read in, from the minarets to, uh, in 1950s. And also the Ayasofya is one of the discussion points about that issue, which has been discussed for more than 80 years inside Turkey. It is not something that Mr. Erdogan woke up and started to say that I will turn Ayasofya from museum to the mosque. It has been discussed already mm. inside Turkey for more than 80 years. And also, when you take a look at to the history of Ayasofya, it is also a discussion point. Okay. In 1204, when the, when the, this is very important, I should say it also. In uh, 1204, uh, when Latinos uh, conquered it, they looted all the parts. And again, in Dostoevsky even wrote that uh, Ayasofya should be the symbol of the Russian Orthodoxy. And we know that also there are still rumors, there are still lots of discussions that should be transformed into the Orthodoxy uh, during the uh, ceasefire armistice of Mondros in 1990. Right. For this reason, without okay. knowing this historical background, we cannot evaluate the situation okay. by only Yanis, underlining looking at that this the secularist country. Take all of this history, which we must, it's a hugely historical uh, site, is what we're seeing today, what we're talking about, not just a natural conclusion to where we are at and the state that Turkey is in today? Well, uh, what my Turkish friends do not realize is that Hagia Sophia is a symbol for many Christians, millions of Christians around the world. We have been fighting together, Christians and Muslims, we have been fighting jihadism for the last 10 years or so. And now there is this uh, example that will create a rift between Muslim and Christian communities and create new tensions. It will feed the, the narrative of the extremists on both sides. I should remind you that the, uh, the, the Daesh had uh, a goal to conquer Constantinople and make Hagia Sophia a mosque. So this is exactly the jihadist uh, narrative. And also, we have extremist voices in the West as well that want, want to expel Islam from the West. Mm. So what this move will create, it will be the perfect narrative for the extremists of both sides to say, look, there is a clash of civilizations. The two, the two religions cannot live together. One is occupying the other monuments, and we cannot live in peace together. So this is creating, it will create rifts more than, larger than inside Turkey and what is handling right now. Cengiz, that's a solid point, isn't it? Because this is a building that really does symbolize Turkey straddling two different worlds, different faiths. It's been a mosque, it's been a cathedral, now it's a museum, it's open to everybody. Why upset that balance? I think, actually, I don't think so that is related to Daesh and other radical things that this is not related to that. Daesh is uh, total uh, different issue and other uh, fractions in the Western world, uh, radical uh, things that is not related to do that. And in you, if you look at the history of Turkey, if you look at the history of Ottomans, and you can see that all religions uh, live together, and Jews and Christianity and Muslims, still like that. And and two two three years ago, we have opened up very big uh, Jewish. Uh, church or in uh, Adirne, Adrenopol, and also uh, Turkey tried to, uh, you know, uh, recover or to some of uh, churches and other uh, things in related to Christianity and uh, Jews in Turkey. 
And you can see in Turkey still uh, some mosques and uh, church uh, all together uh, mm. next to uh, each other in Kuzguncuk, in other areas. And when you go to uh, Bulu Mosque, you can see that the people uh, are praying there and uh, also tourists and come and to do, uh, you know, to visit the mosque. I think it's not related to uh, radicalism. Sure, radicalism okay. is totally, totally different. Yusuf, Turkey, Turkey look, is just turn to Yusuf, a secular country. Turkey but is, but this is my this point. Is the, this is this my is point, the sociology Genghis, changing Turkey from the laicity to if secularity. I just, if I could just stress that point that you're making, that Turkey is a secular country that has mosques, it has synagogues, it has churches, everyone living side by side. So why upset the balance? Uh, being a secular does not mean that you should uh, forget about what is about your values and the symbol of the concurment of the uh, Istanbul. Let me remind you that I have lived more than two years inside Greece. And inside Greece, if we are talking about the bridge between the cultures and the coexistence of the religions with each other, you cannot go to a mosque inside Athens, inside Salonico. And if you are the citizen of the Greece, they do not even provide you a graveyard. If you are died inside the Athens, you should carry your graveyard even to do uh, Ixanti, uh, which is uh, 500 kilometers north of the Greece. So when we are talking about, we should talk about comparatively. I do not think that uh, turning uh, the Hagia Sophia uh, from museum to the uh, mosque again, will not change the balance, will not change the dynamic of the balance in, in the society. Because, let me give you one example. At 1492, when the Spanish Inquisition started inside Spain, the Ottoman Sultan agreed them and brought all of the Jewish people to the Ottoman lands while people are praying inside the churches, inside the mosques, inside the havras, in the synagogues, uh, freely. For this reason, mm -hmm. Uh, my right of my right of praying inside Hagia Sophia uh, shouldn't harm the people who lives inside Turkey as a Christian because the coexistence in Istanbul and in the many other parts of the Turkey uh, since from uh, 1,000 years are all together with each other. But when you go to the Europe, who can tell me the oldest history of the? Most inside Yusuf, Paris, I'm just going to, because we're London, running out of time, I just Berlin. want to jump in with one uh, very quick, almost a yes or no question. You say that the Hagia Sophia should be opened up to Muslims praying. Could it be opened up to both Muslims and Christians praying in it? Uh, I do not think that uh, Muslims and Christians can pray in a mosque uh, at the same time. OK, all right. Yanis, uh, just a last point to you. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, we've heard from the Greek cultural minister saying that no change can be made without the approval of the UN's own intergovernmental committee. I mean, this is quite an interesting point. Can Turkey unilaterally change the status of the Hagia Sophia? Well, uh, legally it can't, but uh, we've seen uh, Mr Erdogan. Uh, he's disres disrespectful of all international law regarding uh, Turkish activities in Eastern Mediterranean, in Syria, in Libya, everywhere. So I won't be surprised if Mr. Erdogan thinks that uh, Turkey is not obliged to preserve uh, UNESCO heritage and uh, the international law. OK, thanks so much for a very lively discussion today. Yusuf Albarada, Yanis Kotsumitis and Cengiz Tomar. And thank you too very much for watching. You can see the programme again anytime by visiting our website. That's aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, do go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Laura Kyle and the whole team here, it's bye for now.